It's been a while since I've done a non-match video, so I wanted to make this video today comparing some of the PCCs that I have and talking about how their features actually translate into performance in a competitive scene. So not on range, not home defense, talking purely about competition here. I'm going to focus mainly on USPSA because that's the sport that I'm most familiar with. A lot of what I have to say probably translates into other sports, but I don't know the rules for those sports. So we're mainly going to be focused on USPSA. I'm going to try to talk about five categories for each of these guns. Ergos, recoil, optics, trigger, and magazines. All of those things play a big part in success in a competitive scene. You'll notice I did not mention reliability. All of these guns are reliable. If they weren't, they wouldn't be on the table. So let's start off with what I would consider on the lower end of um, performance when it comes to competition. And that is the CZ Scorpion Evo 3. You'll notice that the Evo is the only gun on the table that I do not have stamped. Uh, I'm filming this in May of 2021, and it's still perfectly legal for the handgun to be in this configuration. So save your comments if that changes in the future. As far as ergos are concerned, the CZ ergos are a little weird. They're sort of a weird hybrid between, uh, you've got sort of an HK-like uh, cocking handle here. You've kind of got elements of an AK in the magazine release, uh, but you know the safety is similar to an AR, and then you have the bolt hold bolt release. It's not great, it's not bad. I'm sure if you trained with it, you would be just fine. Where this gun starts to fail is pretty much everything else. Um, as far as the recoil is concerned, this is a big heavy bolt, direct blowback and it recoils way more than it should. Now this is not a very heavy gun, so that certainly doesn't do it any favors, but for shooting a nine millimeter, the recoil on this thing, it's, it's kind of silly. It's just more than it, it should be. But that's what is a consequence of the, the action, the operating system. Um, as far as the trigger is concerned, stock triggers on Evos are atrocious. Um, go ahead and find one and shoot one if you don't believe me. Uh, this trigger has been updated with the HB Industries um, spring kit and trigger face. and um, It's okay now. It's not great, but it's okay. As far as um, optics are concerned, it's a pick rail, so you can mount whatever you want on it. Um, the standard iron sights are actually pretty good, but I have just have an RMR on here, an extra one that I had lying around. Um, so it's fine. You can do sort of whatever you want. So that covers recoil, trigger, optics, and ergos. Now on to the magazine for the Scorpions. Uh, they're actually pretty good. They're pretty good. The key point with all of these magazines is it has to hold more than 32 rounds. 32 rounds is the maximum amount of a course of fire for USPSA. And you always want a few more just in case, you know, you need a makeup shot or there's a swing or, or some other challenging target that you want to have a couple extra rounds for. So the Scorpion Evo mags are uh, relatively inexpensive, at least they were. Uh, whenever I talk about prices or relative prices, just understand that we're in a bit of a weird time right now. And so everything I say here is sort of relative. But um, in the good times, these magazines were inexpensive and um, easy to get a hold of. Uh, and they hold more than 32 rounds with the uh, extensions. And there are a lot of companies who make aftermarket extensions. These are tailors, but you know, there are others. Uh, but the magazines work fine. I have heard that if you leave these magazines loaded long-term, uh, the plastic feed lips can crack. I don't do that. I don't leave my competition magazines loaded. So I've never experienced that, but it is just something to uh, be aware of. So then on to number four. Here we get into a more traditional uh, direct blowback AR9. So this is built off a quarter circle 10 upper and lower. Uh, this gun is stamped as are the rest of these that we'll talk about today. Um, so yeah, if you wanna go through that, you know, you can electronically file a form one that come back pretty quick. I think it's like a month these days. 
which again I understand it's unconstitutional it shouldn't exist but whatever uh, some some of us are just willing to do it and I'm one of those people um, recoil with an AR9 we have the same problem as the Evo is a big heavy bolt big heavy spring and buffer and it's just a lot of mass uh, moving back and forth and you can't cheat Isaac Newton um, the physics is just gonna take the day here um, the nice part about this is I have a JP bolt and I have a JP um, spring system in here and you can tune those so if you do take the time you can actually get these guns running okay and that's that's why I like them um, the, the, it does work it's just the recoil is just higher than than the rest of the ones that we're going to talk about so that's that's a ding as far as ergos are concerned, it's an AR, so it's got traditional AR ergos, which is to say probably best in class. You know, the safety selector, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, the magazine release is, you know, you've got options, but it's where you think. Um, a lot of direct blowback 9 millimeters do not have bolt hold opens. This one is no different, so this doesn't actually do anything in this system, but it's there. As far as trigger is concerned, uh, this is a hyperfire competition. Uh, one thing to note that if you are using old school or previous generation hyperfires on direct blowback AR9s, they're not really, they weren't really designed for it. And so um, just be very careful and keep an eye on your springs because they are known to go full auto. It's just not designed for that bolt mass and high bolt velocity coming back and smacking that hammer face. They will wear out, they will go full auto, and you do not want that. These days, Hyperfire does make new triggers that are specifically designed to handle that. So if you're going to build a direct blowback AR9, I highly recommend Hyperfire as a trigger system. Just buy the right one. Know what you're buying, do your research, and buy the one that's going to handle that high recoil force. Because the last thing you want to do is go full auto on the clock and get DQ'd. As far as optics, it's an AR. You can do whatever you want. Um, my preferred optic for competition is the 510C. It's got a nice op big open window, uh, can run on solar power, all that good stuff. You know, I'm not fighting a war with a hollow sun or anything. This is purely for competition use and, um, and they work well and they're relatively inexpensive. Um, so I like them. Now, as far as magazines for this gun, this gun actually uses a Colt SMG uh, magazines. Um, these standard hold 32 rounds, which puts us right on the edge for USPSA, but there are plenty of people who make extensions. Again, these are the Taylor extensions, uh, plus 10, I think. So it gives you 42 rounds, which means there's plenty for a stage. Uh, Colt SMG mags can be a little finicky, so make sure you buy high quality ones, I think. Um, test them out, make sure they run in your gun. Again, a lot of the magazine, it's you're tuning a system. So between your bolt, your buffer, and your magazine, all of those things basically have to work together as, as well as your ammunition. Uh, but once you get it dialed in, it will run reliably. Now, number three, this one I did not expect. It was a genuine surprise to me. Um, this is the last of our direct blowback guns. And this is the Palmetto State Armory AKV. As far as recoil is concerned, it is the softest recoiling direct blowback gun that I own, even as, a, as an, S, an SBR. Um, the gun is very heavy, so that plays a part in it. Um, it just feels the, the recoil is just lighter. It's just lighter recoiling than the Scorpion or the AR-9 that I have, which surprised me, but um, it's a very nice shooting gun. As far as the Ergos, they're AK Ergos. so. You know, there's pluses and minuses to that. Um, if you're very familiar with the AK system, you can run this no problem. It's virtually identical uh, with one neat little improvement, I think. Um, so there's that. So the safety, this does have an enhanced safety here. You have a shelf. So if you're right-handed, um, you can use your um, trigger finger to activate or deactivate the safety uh, before a course of, as the course of fire starts, and then you can get right uh, doing the work. So that's pretty nice there, and the safety moves um, with not a lot of resistance, which is good. Uh, the one cool feature on the um, AKV that is not AK-like is this is actually a bolt hold open. So if I rack the bolt back and push that up, 
it will hold the bolt open, which is super nice, if nothing else, for administrative purposes. Um, on the range, you can very easily unload and show clear and do all that good stuff. And then if you depress this, it will send the bolt home, which is cool. Uh, nice big magazine release here on the AKV. I think you can actually get bigger ones, but uh, this works just fine. As far as triggers are concerned, uh, this has the ALG AKT trigger in it. It's a fine AK trigger. I would challenge you to find a better one. Um, you know, they, they work in them and they run just fine. As far as optics, you know, mounting AK optics is always a little tricky because of the relative height difference between the stock and the top cover. Um, you just have to find what works for you and you've got plenty of pick rail space there so you can do, you have a lot of options. I do have a 45 degree offset red dot on here because I do use this in competition uh, sometimes and being able to make those left hand leans, get around walls and corners and still be able to see and hit a target uh, is useful. As far as magazines, uh, the AKV actually uses the same basic pattern of magazine as the Scorpion, which is kind of cool. Uh, these are the Palmetto State Armory specific magazines, but you can use Scorpion magazines in them. In the before times, these magazines were very inexpensive and very available. I think I paid $10 for the magazine and something like $14 or $15 for the extension. So it's $25 thereabouts and you get a 50 round magazine or in today's prices, approximately one kidney. Um, and I've never had any problems with these magazines. Um, I know some people have, but I haven't. And this is magazine number one. So this is the mag I actually use um, when I used to shoot this comp mag in competition. Um, this is the primary one I use. Um, probably a couple thousand rounds downrange just out of this magazine alone uh, in the gun and no problem so far. I don't know what PSA's current um, production or whatever it looks like, but I highly suspect that, uh, you know, if we can get over this mountain that we're currently stuck on top of, uh, these magazines will once again be uh, available and relatively inexpensive. On to number two, and I wish it was higher. I still wish this was number one, but uh, gotta be realistic here. Uh, number two is the MP5 platform. Um, this is an MP5 clone. I've had this gun for a decade or more. And for most of that time, for nine of those 10 years, it was my primary competition gun. As far as recoil is concerned, this is the softest shooting PCC in the history of mankind. There is no softer shooting gun. And you can have a different opinion on that and you're happy to be wrong. Um, yeah, it's just great. The delayed roller blowback system is real. Um, the Germans or the Spanish, depending on how you look at things, figured it out. And it has been the best submachine gun in the history of submachine guns. As far as ergos, that's where the gun starts to sort of drop off a bit. The ergos on an MP5 aren't great. Even someone like me who has, I don't know, tens of thousands of rounds just in this gun alone, um, they're still not great. The stock safety selector is quite frankly awful this is a magpul one this one helps a lot but um you know still less than optimal but this one does give you your your plenty of purchase here on your if you're right-handed um, to use your uh, your thumb your strong thumb to get that off safe uh, it all it is also ambi um, so in theory you could use your trigger finger or something i don't know but if you're left-handed that helps too the magazine release on this uh, this is an aftermarket part from HK Parts. It is worlds better than the stock paddle uh, because mags on a, an MP5 do drop free, at least in my gun. And so this allows you to drop the magazine uh, with your trigger finger as you're reloading. Um, speaking of reloading, there is no magwell on this gun, nor have I ever seen one, which means you're reloading into a soda straw, which sucks. Uh, it's very hard to do on the clock under stress even artificial stress, um, I, yeah, in competition, um, it's tough and that's really dings it. Also, you have the, the cocking handle here. Um, it's a little different. I, again, I have a lot of time on it. An AR charging handle, in my opinion, is still easier to do than dealing with this, but you can get around it. As 
As far as trigger is concerned, a stock MP5 trigger is not great. They're very heavy, they're very mushy, a lot of take up, over travel, all that bad stuff. This is a Bill Springfield trigger pack, um, and it is worlds better than a standard one. I would put it after the work into sort of like a mid-range AR trigger. Not a great AR trigger, but not a bad one either. As far as optics, um, there are plenty of ways to mount things to an MP5 these days because of the popularity of the clones. Uh, I have a pick rail, piece of pick rail up here mounted to the gun with a Holosun 510C. Um, I did have a 45 degree op optic mounted on this gun when I used it in my primary competition gun, so you can do that. With the Dakota Tactical M-Lock handguard here, you can actually mount lights and lasers. Obviously lasers for PCC and USPSA are legal, and so I did have a laser mounted there um, at one time. But you do have to spend the money to upgrade the handguard system. But really, the key, the killer flaw uh, in the MP5 is the magazine. These are 30 round German magazines, and they're the only magazines that I actually trust because they're the only ones that actually work. There are a lot, uh, well, I'll say a lot, there are a couple of aftermarket magazines that are more than 30 rounds available. None of them work reliably. Uh, trust me, I have tried them all. They just don't work, at least not in my gun. Please, 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 Magpul, come out with that 50 round MP5 drum that you've been talking about. I will buy all of them because I have high, I have high confidence in Magpul as a company. I think it'll work just fine. Um, having to reload on a 32 round course of fire with a 30 round magazine, when you go to a major and you have to do that eight or 10 times, you're giving up something like 20 seconds in time for free just for reloading. And it's very hard to be competitive when you're just leaving 20 seconds on the table over the course of a whole match. That really is the flaw with the MP5. If you can find magazines bigger than 30 rounds that actually work reliably in your gun, go for it. Um, it's a great platform and you're gonna have a lot of fun doing it and it's gonna work out well for you. But until they fix that issue, gotta move on. And that brings us to number one, the reigning champion, the current, what I would call king of the pistol caliber carving for competition. And that is the CMMG Banshee. So this is an eight and a half inch Banshee that has been form one. As far as recoil is concerned, the delayed radial blowback system is real. It is not hype, it is real. There is physics behind it. Just the, um, just the minor delay in keeping that action closed really, really reduces the felt recoil from the shooter. Also, this um, uses a standard AR-15 buffer and spring, not a nine millimeter direct blowback buffer and spring which is nice because that means you can tune it. So I actually have the, a JP silent capture system in here, and that allows me to tune different buffer weights and different spring weights in order to get this thing running so smooth. It is the second smoothest PCC, as far as recoil is concerned, that I've ever shot, of course, behind the MP5, which uh, no one's going to dethrone that anytime soon. The Ergos are excellent. This is where it uh, definitely scores some points over the MP5. Standard AR Ergos, which is great. Um, this gun does actually have a bolt hold open feature, so this serves a purpose in this gun. And we've got a big old magwell here for unloaded starts or mandatory reloads. It really helps, unlike the MP5 trying to load into the soda straw. Uh, it's a very big advantage. As far as triggers, um, again, AR triggers. Unlike the direct blowback AR9, because the bolt on a Banshee is much closer in weight and bolt velocity to a standard AR15 versus a direct blowback nine millimeter, uh, standard AR triggers like a Hyperfire won't actually beat themselves to death in a Banshee. So you can use um, Hyper, 
hyperfires or your favorite AR trigger, and it's going to last. Um, it's not going to go full auto because it won't beat itself to death, which is a huge pro in my book. As far as optics, again, you have pick rail, so you can do whatever you want. Um, I have a 45 degree um, Holosun 507 in an Arisaka mount for um, hard left leans and whatnot, uh, another 510C for my main optic. And then I do have a Crimson Trace green laser on the end here. Um, lasers are highly situational. Um, people like to make fun of them or whatever, that's fine. Uh, I don't use it very often, but on the rare occasion that it does help, uh, it can make a big difference. And so it doesn't take up a lot of space, it doesn't add a lot of weight, so why not throw it on there? On the Banshee, I threw on this Atlas S1 handguard. I freaking love these handguards. And unlike when you run them on an AR-15, there is no gas block and no gas tube. So you don't have to worry about if it will fit because it will fit. And I so I really like these handguards. Um, just helps with the ergos. Yeah, I think that's about it as far as the Banshee is concerned. There really is a there there. If you know someone who has a Banshee, um, try it, try it out, give it a shot. Uh, the other nice thing about the Banshee is um, I actually recently built a 16 inch upper using a bolt and barrel kit I got from CMMG. So uh, if I don't want to file a Form 20 or I'm going to a state where uh, short barrel rifles are not legal, I can just pop my 16 inch barrel upper on here and take this gun out of state in a Title I configuration and shoot it in a match and that is perfectly legal. So you can really only do that with the Banshee or the AR-9. You can't convert the other guns uh, in and out of Title II configuration easily or really at all. So that's another nice plus for the Banshee. I know they're hard to come by these days. Um, the CMMG's hilariously backordered. But, you know, that's the times we're in. Um, give it a year, hopefully, maybe, or two, and um, we'll be back to s somewhat normal, hopefully. I don't know. But, yeah, H highly recommend the Banshee. Uh, and then the last thing we have to talk about is the mags. Banshee uses Glock mags, so does it take Glock mags? Why, yes, yes it does. Glock mags are reliable, relatively inexpensive, and more importantly, ubiquitous. Um, everybody has Glock mags. Everybody makes accessories for Glock mags. These, once again, are the tailors, but there are probably a dozen manufacturers for Glock mag extensions, and I'm sure they all work just fine. This brings this magazine up to 50 rounds, which, um, you know, a whole box of ammo, again, quite expensive these days, but it allows you to get yourself through a course of fire without having to reload um, normally. So that's very good. And of course, with these, it's a Glock mag, so if you actually do need to clean it, it's relatively easy to just pop this plate off, do whatever you need to inside the magazine, clean the spring, do whatever, and then put the whole thing back together, which is great. So that's my opinion as far as PCCs for competition are concerned. I think you, um, the new technology in the Banshee uh, is finally catching up to the old technology in the MP5, but... These two are by far your best options. The rest of them are direct blowback, and direct blowback is um, its not a great operating system for the purpose of competition. It serves purposes elsewhere, I'm sure. But when you're on the clock and you want every advantage you can get, direct blowback is not the way. Now, you may be thinking, there's a gun that's not on this table. What about the MPX? Well, when I started this video, I said if the gun was not reliable, it would not be on this table. And I mean that. Um, the MPX is the best PCC on the market that almost works. I know yours might run fine, but I have seen dozens of them over years of competition shooting, and they all go down on the clock. SIG just hasn't figured it out yet. There are just too many things on that gun that can go wrong. I know multiple people who used to shoot MPXs and came off of them because they just would not run reliably over the long term. If you only shoot 100 rounds a year, fine. But we're talking about guys who shoot tens of thousands of rounds a year and the MPX just doesn't hold up. In my group of friends, we actually call them Sex Panther because 60% of the time they work every time. If you don't believe me, 
go to a big USPSA match, find the guys shooting MPXs, and just watch them. Just watch them shoot. Follow them around all day and count how many malfunctions they have. You have to keep meticulous maintenance records. Uh, you've got to be a super gun nerd to keep those running right. And even then, they're going to go down on you when it, you know, when that buzzer goes off. Uh, we spend a lot of time and money in this sport. We travel all over the country, and the last thing I want to do is go somewhere and have my gun be the reason why I can't continue shooting a match. So that's what I'm going to say about that. Um, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.